All right, Michael Snyder is a gift to us every day. He rides he uh, every week, I should say. He writes the column in the Marina Times. He writes the coastal commuter. He comes to us on a wave of sunshine oh. and a rainbow. Hi, Michael Snyder. Hey, Michael. Happy Friday. Hey, hi, guys. Let's dispel all this bad juju. It's Good Friday of Easter yes. weekend. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you. As usual, I, your, 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 your sweetness and niceness. I'd like, to, I'd like to offer a traditional Easter blessing, if that's okay. Okay. Sure. May all your Cadbury eggs be fertile. May <laughs> your chocolate bunnies multiply. And may your basket be laden with peeps. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, so where are my where are my peeps at? I mean, really, I know I put the package of peeps somewhere. I, I, wait, hang on. No, okay, fine. We should move on. Oh, what? <laughs> what do you have for us this Easter weekend? Okay, okay. This is a, a watershed moment. There I was a few days ago, sitting in an airy IMAX theater, fully vaxxed, masked, and socially distanced. To see Godzilla versus Kong. I mean, oh. I didn't, didn't care who triumphed. I was just excited to properly see a blockbuster on a big, big screen. But now I got to be a bit more critical. First, remember, there was the 2014 American reboot Godzilla updating the iconic supersized radioactive lizard who has stopped cities in Japan since the early 1950s, courtesy of Toho Productions. But now he was going to be depicted with superb computer-generated special effects. Instead of the creature being a man in a rubber suit, towering over a miniature model city, that was followed by the latest American update of the giant ape thriller King Kong with the rather great 2017 flick Kong Skull Island, uh, it, it'll never tarnish the 1930s original, but it wiped away the memory of the awful uh, the Dino De Laurentiis produced 76 movie King Kong, which was the one where Dino promised when the monkey die, everybody going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> then there was that's this a great, crappy uh, Godzilla sequel. That's a great Dino crappy, De Laurentiis impression, by the way. Very well there was done. Go the, ahead. The crappy Godzilla sequel in 2019, Godzilla King of the Monsters. So all three movies were interlinked by the presence of a monster hunting organization called Monarch. And so we finally get the inevitable clash of the titans, Godzilla versus Kong. So uh, imagine Rocky versus Ivan Drago. Only Rocky's a giant ape and Drago is a giant radioactive lizard. That's not hard to do. Well, anyway, uh, Godzilla versus Kong is pure, <laughs> massive, hyper real CGI creatures pounding the living hell out of one another. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So when they I mean, if it's if it's Rocky versus Drago or if they're pounding living daylights out of each other, is that what they're doing? Are they like almost trading punches? Yeah, absolutely. They're in a variety of settings including Florida, the open sea, and Hong Kong. Yes, to honor Godzilla's Japanese roots as the destroyer of Tokyo since the 50s, an Asian city is trashed here. And, and to honor oh. the original Kong skyscraper climbing New York City adventure in the 30s, Kong finds a nice pointy spire to ascend. There are various supporting monsters to cause havoc, one in particular, but no more spoilers. I will say that the action is nonstop. It's well choreographed. It's eye-blasting madness, rendering some pretty good actors superfluous as the humans in the uh, in the melee. Alexander Skarsgård, Rebecca Hall, Millie Bobby Brown, Damian Bashir, they're all wonderful. And there are a bunch of plot hole-ridden elements, especially when it comes to moving the beasties from here to there and the people into position, you know, across and below the surface of the globe. You know, there's some visually splendid but nonsensical uh, stuff where they go to the center of the earth. I, no matter. Director Adam Wingard carries off this Clash of the Titans so expertly that you just accept the hand wavium if this is your thing and you go for the ride. It's in theaters and on HBO Max, although this was definitely made to be seen in roadshow format. Let me ask you a question. Uh, not that the entire thing doesn't, uh, you know, I don't mean to hold like a a real standard to any of the th action, but isn't Godzilla a lot bigger than Kong? Yeah, you would think so, but I think it's conceivable that there are radioactive Wheaties that Kong has been eating since the last movie. Okay, he, so Kong got bigger, Godzilla didn't get smaller. Well, yeah, I mean, they've been feeding him, I don't know, ape 
Chow, <laughs> Special Ape Chow, whatever it was, they okay. they are on equal footing in this movie. Again, <laughs> hand wavy them, Mark. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, 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 okay. Wait a sec. Superfluous. Um. All right. I suppose superfluous. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Um. Now for the antithesis or antidote to the Big G versus Kong. The dr- antithesis. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Go ahead. <laughs> the dramedy French exit from director Azizel Jacobs and screenwriter Patrick DeWitt. It's a character-driven piece about the travels and travails of the well-to-do. It reminded me of the upper crust whimsy and angst occasionally mined by the snarky, smirky filmmakers Wes Anderson and Whit Stillman. To its credit, French Exit has a serious asset that raises it above any accusations of genteel knockoff, Michelle Pfeiffer as the lead. She plays a widowed socialite from New York City who heads off to Paris to fritter away whatever money her late husband left her. She drags along her feckless adult son, played by Lucas Hedges, and he has a mission of his own. He wants to sort out his romantic life after leaving his girlfriend behind. The girlfriend, by the way, is played by the appealing British actress Imogene Poots, recently in The Father, but she's just one of this motley crew portrayed by some equally adept players, including Valerie Mahaffey, Danielle McDonald, and Isaac de Bancole. This is a relatively mild stuff that has a certain drawing room propriety to it, even when things are supposed to be getting wild. But the script is kind of dryly droll in an occasionally satisfying way. And Pfeiffer is so in command of her character that she makes this trip worthwhile. Uh, French exit in theaters for now. Wow. But uh, uh, Michael, we only have another minute left, but I know you have one uh, one more at least to get to, don't you? Sure. Shiva Baby. Uh, or is it Shiva Baby? It's an intimate, brief, but effective dark comedy that's not about the Indian god Shiva, but instead concerns a young woman trapped amid family, friends, and lovers at a Shiva, the Jewish uh, post-funeral gathering usually uh, held at a home to honor the departed. So the Shiva baby of the title is Danielle. She's an aimless, bisexual, Jewish liberal arts college kid who is working as a call girl on the side to make some dough, but still living under the thumb of her overbearing parents. Mom and dad have dragged her to the Shiva, where she runs into her ex-girlfriend, Maya, who's on a career path to become a lawyer, and, and everybody thinks that's great. Uh, then again, the Danielle-Maya relationship ended poorly. And it's still the cause for shame on the part of the the girls' conservative families. And complicating matters, a very recent client of Danielle's shows up at the Shiva, and the guy has brought his wife and infant daughter. The music is uh, – let me just say, this is Danielle in free fall in this cramped environment – And she's trying to be what she thinks the people she encounters want her to be. And it's kind of like purgatory. uh, And considering the funereal aspects of the event, it seems right. Uh, There's a line in the Talking Heads song, Psycho Killer, that goes, I'm tense and nervous and I can't relax. And that's how I felt watching uh, watching, uh, Shiva Baby in a good way. Congrats to screenwriter, director Emma Seligman and actress Rachel Sennett, who portrays Danielle. Um, this is sharp, witty, and effective, and in select uh, theaters, also streaming on Apple TV. Shiva, baby. Wow. So to review, Godzilla versus Kong, uh, you didn't hate it. Although I must tell you something. I hate to do this, but uh, on the text Why line. Why don't you just text it? Yeah, from the 408. Uh, I'm sorry, from the um, 415. Shout out to the city in Marin. <laughs> no. It was stupid. I waited 40 years for this remake. Michael has been compromised. <laughs> <laughs> not not true. I didn't say it was brilliant. I said it was just rock'em, sock'em action. I said okay. the was in it. Whoever was listening didn't pay attention. Oh, okay. All right. So he's uh, not he's not over the top. And by the way, from the 408, they point out that you used the word feckless, which is, uh, yes, a dingable word. Uh you did, uh, though, like French Exit. Am I right about that? And you do recommend to an extent, Shiva... To an extent. To an extent. Oh, to an extent. Okay. And Shiva Baby you liked yeah, also. The, the, or the you liked. The, three, the best of the three films was made for next to no money. Shiva Baby. Okay. So the best of the three is Shiva Baby. You can read more from Michael Snyder. Follow him on social media at Culture Blaster. 
No, I don't know what that is, but it uh, sounds good. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and Michael, we love visiting with you. You can read Michael in the Marina Times as well. He comes and he leaves on a rainbow magic. Bye, Michael. See you, Michael. Hello.